All right, what is up everybody? I've just got back from Jordan a couple of days ago and I had a lot of questions while I was out there. And I have my own questions to ask and I also put out on Instagram some of your questions, asking you for some of your questions. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna put it right here. So I'm gonna go through each of those questions now and answer them as best as I possibly can, give you all the stuff you need for Petra. First off, Petra and then Jordan in general. Um, and I'm gonna list the questions below so you can skip to them and you can skip to the answer that you want. All right, here we go. First question, is Jordan safe and are there any scams? By far and away, the question I got asked the most. Jordan absolutely is safe. It's open for business. Tourism is massive for them. It's a massive industry, probably um, the biggest industry and they need to protect it and they do. Um, it is surrounded by some scary looking countries and I got asked by my family and my friends, is it safe as well? Uh, why are you going? Um, but yeah, absolutely, uh, never felt safer and that's walking around at night, uh, going in and out of tourism destinations and driving, which I'm gonna come to later. So yes, Jordan is safe. Second part of that, are there any scams? Um, there are some of the usual scams that you'd probably probably expect, um, in particular in the tourism destinations and in Petra. So the scams to look out for are things like, there's a free horse ride, but of course you're, um, you have to tip and there's pressure on you to tip. And then when you wanna to go to things like the viewpoints of the treasury, which I'll talk a bit more about, they will explain to you that you can only go with a guide because there's police stopping you. Of course there is no police stopping you, but they will make a scene. Um, and we actually got ourselves into a bit of an awkward situation because we didn't want to take a guide on the second day. We knew exactly where we wanted to go and it wasn't very high. So why pay five or 10 Jordanian dinar, which is five or 10 quid, um, when you can actually just go up by yourself. Um, everyone tells you, including the guys here, that you have to take a guide. That's controversial because you can do it by yourself but they make a scene if you don't they'll generally make a scene and say the police will stop you uh, which they won't the police will definitely not stop you but they will shout and make a scene so it's quite uncomfortable so we've just convinced this kid to do it for five five dinar which is pretty good he's only taken us one way to the short viewpoint we did the other one yesterday which cost us so yeah look out for those kind of things they'll tell you you've dropped something they'll tell you they found your battery that you dropped yesterday all these kind of things just to stop you and grab your attention but in general they are pretty respectful when you just say, no, I'm not interested. Um, and it's not as much of a hassle as you would find in other countries. And then the only other thing that happened was when I turned my back for two seconds and put down my Oakleys, my sunglasses, some kid who was guiding a uh, Chinese tourist actually disappeared with them. And I desperately wanted to find them and it, that not to have been the case. And I made sure I found them. And in the end it was like, right, they've been taken. And I found him getting pictures taken by the Chinese tourists who knew they were mine, um, getting selfies taken and pictures taken. And then when I caught him, was like, oh, I was bringing them back. He wasn't bringing them back. So just watch your stuff. Use your general common sense, as my dad would say, keep your wits about you and uh, you'll be fine. A lot of people are asking, is the monastery worth it? Um, yes, 100%, absolutely. One of the other things that they try to sell you is a trip, a drive round to the back entrance, which is very close to the monastery. It will save you walking all the way. Don't even entertain that idea. From the entrance to the monastery, it's probably an hour to an hour and a half. It is nothing. The actual hike itself takes 25 minutes. It was easy. Okay, in the heat, it's gonna be harder, and we went in winter, so it was still warm, but it wasn't anywhere near as hot as it can get but it is a pretty easy hike, definitely worth it. It's beautiful up there and make sure you go past the monastery to the viewpoint. There's a huge open viewpoint where you can see for miles. Um, so yes, 100% the monastery is worth it. Next question, should I ride the donkeys and the camels? That's up to you. Um, my question is, do you need to? Um, are you lazy enough that you need a donkey to carry you up steps which take you 25 minutes? The poor little donkey, I mean, I don't know, how big are you? Um, it, I don't think so. I don't think you should. Camels aren't so bad. Camels are kind of bigger animals. They're used to carrying things a little bit more. Horses the same. Have a little horse ride if you want, if you can afford it. It's not the kind of tourism that I want to support. They weren't generally that badly treated. I actually was keeping an eye out personally for horses, camels and donkeys. They were okay. The donkeys are probably a little bit more mistreated than others in terms of being ridden around at 100 miles an hour and whipped and smacked and the kids climbing all over them. But having said that, there's definitely a lot worse out there. And there are signs up to say, uh, to report any abuse that you do see, which I found quite comforting. So they do take that seriously in Jordan. But in my opinion, don't bother, just walk, just walk, much, much easier. 
how can I get epic photos like yours of the treasury? Thank you for a start. Um, basically, there are a few different walks and hikes up to the view over the treasury. Um, two of them are really quite high. One of them isn't. One of them is very easy and you're more on a, a level because the treasury is 40 meters high. Um, yeah, like I said earlier, you kind of need to take a guide or they're going to cause a scene. If you wait till it's quiet, you'll probably be okay. Um, but we tried to go up there on our own and there was a little shit basically causing a big scene saying he's going to get the police. And I was like, go and get the police. <laughs> and there aren't any police. Um, so yeah, it's probably worth a fiver, five Jordanian dollars or ten um, to go to the smaller viewpoint and then they'll take some pictures for you and that kind of thing. I mean, it is their living and their livelihood. Um, and then there's a couple that are quite high. Now, I do think you need a guide for those ones because they're pretty tough and they'll show you the right route and they'll help you. Um, I wouldn't have been comfortable doing one of the higher ones by myself. And then the final thing is, once you're there, don't risk your life for the perfect photo. I got pretty close. Um, a lot of people do get quite close. I'm pretty sure someone probably falls off once a year taking a selfie. And if you fall off, you're gonna die. So take it from me, be careful, be safe. Um, but that's how you get that, that epic cliff shot down. Um, in terms of photography tips, there's a golden hour usually um, where the sun, because it's such a high canyon, the sun will hit you and the treasury at the right time. Um, when we were there, which was uh, winter, say winter, wasn't that cold, um, it was about 11 o'clock. So it might vary when you go, but look out for that because it's nice to have you lit up and the treasury lit up rather than everything being in the shade. And then the other thing is you need to get the camera high. So you need someone with long arms that's gonna appreciate the angle. Um, it took me and a friend a little while to get the right photos and the right angle. Um, but yeah, I'll show you a couple of pictures now. It's uh, well worth doing, well worth taking the hike up, but be careful. Can I eat inside Petra? You are taking your planning to the next level. Yes, you can. And I was actually impressed by the quality of it. For 10 Jordanian dinar, you can get a full buffet, which was really nice. Um, that one you can only pay cash for. The more expensive Poshnosh um, was just around the corner and that did take card. So you can pay by card because um, we did run out of cash actually. Um, so that is by number 13. That's also where the start of the monastery hike goes. Um, but yeah, that food was really, really good. So if you don't take your own pack lunch, go check out that buffet. Very, very reasonable. Next question came. This one was on Instagram and was a bit odd. I feel mysteriously weird visiting ancient places. How do you feel? Not like that. I feel fine. I don't know why you feel weird or how long I should entertain that question for. But no, I don't. I'm okay. Thank you. All right, another practical question. What should I bring to Petra? Camera, batteries, good shoes. Um, I wrote a couple down. Water, obviously, some food, sun cream, something to cover your head or neck. Uh, the desert sun can be really strong. And actually, the whole of Petra was quite warm. And we went in winter and outside of Petra was cold. But still, when the sun drops in the shade, or it becomes evening time, or if you're gonna do Petra by night, which is a whole nother question, um, then bring some warm clothes because it does get chilly quick. The desert can be boiling boiling hot by day and very cold by night. Believe it or not, being off season and being winter, it is cold. So you can see we are wrapped up warm, but apparently it's gonna be less busy, less hassle, less stress than if you come in the summer. So we'll review the best time of year to come later, but so far, so good. Um, we actually loved going at this time of year because it was warm enough to do the hikes and get a bit of a sweat on and walk around in a t-shirt. Um, but I cannot imagine walking around Petra in the, in the height of summer in you know, 35, 40 degree heat. Un honestly, I can't. So try and do it in either when we went, which is in the winter, which is January, February, or maybe that in the middle of off season, peak season. Should I do Petra by night is the next question. Um, I think you should because you're probably never going to go back to Petra. However, it was disappointing. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. You can't really take very good pictures. They um, they sort of usher you into sit down. You have to watch a couple of flute performances, which I'm sure were very very talented flute players, whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, it's not the best. Uh, I did get a couple of okay pictures, so I was quite happy. You need a tripod, you need patience, and you need to step back away from the crowd to kind of try and get uh, the treasury and the stars in. But it was quite nice, even just walking down and walking out was okay, but it's a little bit disappointing and probably not 
the top thing on your list. Um, I also didn't appreciate, I didn't understand why at the end they let you take pictures and they light it up in blue and orange and yellow and it just makes the whole thing look like a bit of a stage show which is stupid in my opinion. They should just light it up nicely so you can take a good picture and then go back to town. So yep, yeah, I'm on the fence. Uh, I'm glad I did it, but I wouldn't do it again. They are my questions about Petra done. Now onto Jordan in general. I'm gonna combine these two. How long should I go for? And what is there to do other than Petra? Um, a lot of people start in a man. We didn't go to a man. Um, I didn't think there were many things that I was that interested in and we flew in and out of Aqaba. We did go as high as the Dead Sea, which is one of those tick off the bucket list things. We didn't get very good weather, so we didn't get the perfect picture or video, but it doesn't matter, we floated and swam in the Dead Sea, which has 10 times uh, more salt than the usual sea. It's the lowest point on Earth, um, and then you, because it's 400 meters below sea level, and then you float, because of the salt, you naturally float. So it is cool. Um, if you go there, I recommend um, going into one of the hotels where you can go and use the Dead Sea, you can use their facilities, you can shower, use their pool, and then you usually get lunch as well. But there are public beaches which are around 20 uh, Jordanian dinar. So, and then the other thing, the other main thing you have to do is go and check out Wadi Rum, which is unbelievable, it's fantastic. So I really recommend that. And we also stay just to the south of Aqaba, Aqaba by the beach, which is quite a nice little a sort of seaside place there's snorkeling and diving which you can do there as well so how long to go for we did a week i think a week is enough you can probably do it in less um, we definitely recommend two days in petra rather than one um, we didn't like to rush rush around petra and two days gives you that extra time to make sure you can do the monastery, have lunch, take your time. Um, we hiked to the high point, we did different shots over the treasury. Um, so two days or more is definitely enough for Petra. So the whole trip, maybe one week, five days will probably be okay if you've only got five days, but don't rush it. Don't rush it in a three day tour from a man unless you absolutely have to. How about driving in Jordan? Is it easy to get around, etc.? There are lots of questions about driving. 100% recommend you drive. Um, hiring a car was pretty cheap. The roads were pretty safe, pretty easy to navigate. I recommend getting Google Maps and downloading the, the maps offline before you travel. Um, we loved it. We loved the flexibility. It saved money because we didn't really need to get any tours or anything. We got a Jordan Pass, which included the two entries to Petra and to Wadi Rum and your visa on entry. Um, so there's lots of benefits to driving. The only thing I would say is if you're by yourself, it's going to get a bit expensive. So two, there were two of us, me and a friend, uh, two or more people I recommend if you're driving. And then if you are, other people have asked about going on a tour. If you are by yourself, I do recommend probably the best way is to travel on a tour. Um, because it is quite expensive otherwise. You can find yourself paying for your own room, there's not really many hostels, there's not a lot of public transport which takes you from the different towns. So you kind of need to do it on a tour um, where you might share a room and then you'll see the benefit of having a tour guide, someone that can tell you lots about it. My friend was really keen on the architecture and the history so we found that we did a bit of research ourselves and found out what we wanted to find out. But obviously, pros and cons with a tour, you get a guide, you get everything planned for you, um, you don't have to think about too much, but you're stuck with the tour. So things like walking around Petra, you're going to be following them when actually you just want to go off by yourself. You can weigh it up, but I do recommend if you're thinking about hiring a car, don't be put off. It was fine. Um, look out for the checkpoints. There are some checkpoints where they just check your tourist and you're not doing anything dodgy, so I felt quite assured by that. A couple of people thought I was actually Arabic, which I don't know, maybe it's a compliment, probably the beard. Um, but yeah, arm checkpoints were a little bit nervy, but they're fine. Only a couple of those were armed. And then the final thing, one little tip if you are driving, watch out for the speed bumps. Honestly, you can't see them and they come out of nowhere and you come screeching to a halt. But yeah, we love driving. Flexibility, easy to do, wasn't that expensive. Thumbs up for driving. All right, my final two questions again. I'm going to combine the two. Can you drink alcohol um, and is it expensive? Firstly, it is a little bit expensive. Uh, 10 Jordanian dinar is about uh, just over 10 pound, uh, which is, I don't know, what, 14, 15 US dollars. So yeah, food can be a bit pricey. My friend didn't mind it too much. He didn't think it was that expensive. I thought it was a bit more expensive than I expected. So 
I don't know, it doesn't go too far. Your money doesn't go too far, so you do need to save a bit. However, we did do the whole trip on a pretty tight budget. This trip was not funded for by anybody else. We paid for the flights, the hotels, the tours, everything we did. Um, so this is not sponsored in any way by Jordan. I don't have to tell you any of this. We paid for the car hire, everything. And we did it on a decent budget. So, and that was for a whole week of traveling. So yeah. I guess it isn't that expensive, but I was a bit surprised. I thought it would be cheaper. And the other question, can you drink alcohol? Yes, you can find alcohol for you alcoholics. No, it is nice to have a beer after a long day of traveling. Um, and you can find it in some of the hotels. Uh, there's an Irish bar not too far from the gates of Petra, although the beer is a bit expensive. You can find the odd off-license and supermarket that sells beer. That's probably your best bet, and most of the rooms have fridges. But yes, you can find beer. Be pleased to know. Don't be put off. Go to Jordan. Have a beer. You can even find some cocktails in some of the hotels. So yeah, it's all good. So that is it. That's my questions. If you've got any comments, anything you want to add, please put a little comment below this video. Um, like it, share it, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you for watching and happy travels.